and welcome to another one of my videos and in this video I'm going to correct me mirror okay that was a long video anyway in this video <laughs> I'm going to give me overview of basically my Honda Cafe racer I've done here I was going to make a kind of big finale video and I've been spending the last week and a bit putting like recording getting all the clips together and I was actually halfway through editing the bit of video and came to try and finish it off yesterday and my computer had deleted the file of all of the basically the video I had all the commentary everything so I've kind of just went bugger it I'm just gonna do a quick video now <laughs> giving me verdict to look over the bike and everything else. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to travel up to my favourite little testing track and I'll give a quick overview and I thought Bubbit what I'll do is I'll do a nice little video of me riding the bike and just show you how good it is because to be honest the handling of this bike is just spot on. Which I was surprised at because um, the tyres are actually the same width back and front. Now, obviously, a lot of bikes have, well, nearly all bikes have smaller width front tyres and back just for the handling. It makes weird characteristics, supposedly, if you kind of have them the same or the front one bigger. Um, but with this bike, it's spot on. It's, like I say, I've had no problems with it whatsoever. And this mirror is really starting to do me in. There we go. It's a bit loose and need to tighten. I do have another mirror for the other side, which I could swap over, which might be a bit tighter, but uh, well, it'll do me for now. But like I say, the handling of the bike is just spot on. Uh, literally, it's second to none, actually, um, which I was surprised at, being that I actually made the bike. Um, the radiator, I'm hot. I fixed the main leak, I found the main leak, there was a fracture in one of the tubes and I've kind of JB welded the hell out of it <laughs> and it seems to be holding, I've been for a ride today and it seems to have held, there's a little seep just under it which I think is actually another leak but I've got some rad weld in, or some new rad weld I should say, a different make, I think it's uh, Wayne's or something so I'm hoping that'll just clog that up nicely um, so yeah, hopefully that'll fix that little seat, but it's not spewing out like it was before. So that's another great thing. Oh, we'll just take this corner. And like I say, this bike, it, it leans like, like I say, it, it does have quite a good lean angle. That's, I've got R, R1 forks on here, so they're, they're quite um, high off the floor. The they're actually, well, I say forks, good. The footrests are quite high off the ground, so you can lean it quite well. And it does power out of corners quite well. Y you kind of know what it's going to do. I've got a lot of confidence in this bike, quite a lot of confidence, so I've got a car coming up. This could be an ideal opportunity for an overtake manoeuvre. <laughs> uh, he's a scooter, I'll nod to him anyway. You always have to nod to people on two wheels, they've all got the same death wish as us all. Oh, it's a Chitron C2. I'll leave it for now. Leave him for now, leave him be. Because I'm coming up with a blind curve and I'm not I do not have that much of a death wish. Um, but yeah, it's it's running great. The the cylinders are blowing both fire and spot on. I haven't balanced them yet, but to be honest, going by the response, they're, they're not that far out. Um, what else? It's it's like I say, the first the first few rides, first few months and weeks is just gonna be trial and error basically. That'll do there. Now this bit of road which I'm coming up to now is a lo it's very short but it's got a nice load of bends in it and he's going to go the same way as me so I can't actually show you the full road. So what I'm going to do now is beat this car. There we go. Now hopefully, oh he's turning in, there we go. Spot on my man, thank you very much. I think you've got a bit of a problem with your brake light there, it's flashing a bit. <laughs> This bit of road is a nice little technical bit, and all the all the corners actually run into each other. So there's like you literally right, left, right, left. That's so smooth, but such a great run for any bike. And this one just takes it just after this 60 mile an hour sign right here. So first you lean in, open her up like that. If you want to change gear, go up the box again, and then it goes left here, just over the brow of this hill, straight into a right. Now you can't actually see the right. 
but it's definitely there, so you have to prepare yourself over it. Then you left hand again, and then there's another right hand turn which gradually goes out again to a left hand turn which then tightens into a tighter left hand turn that can catch you out. So I just normally drop the revs off, open her up again, up to the top of the hill, boom, and then let her off. Let her have a bit of over on there. Nice little bit there, but like I say, this this bike, it's phenomenal. The, the, the handling of it is just, like I say, for something I've built and set up, I didn't think it would be anywhere near as good of a handling of a bike it is. Um, I know the S-Rads, which the front forks are off, were a good handling bike, so no doubt that's what I've got to thank. But the back end is pretty much spot on as well. Um, oh, my bloody mirror's gone down again, I'm getting sick of that. I'll have to... Ooh, nobody's coming, no. I couldn't have a bike without any mirrors. I've come to conclude that. Um, just after having this one here. Nope, still, still not right. <laughs> God. Like I say, you get to a sweet... Nah, it's rolling again, fuck it. I'll leave it where it is. Oh, indicator's still on. Got distracted by my mirror there. But um, I, cu I couldn't do without having the mirrors on. Um, th that's the bare minimum, I think, just having one so you can actually look to see when you overtake, there's nobody actually behind you. Um, but um, like I say, if I had two on, I can't get through my shed door. <laughs> um, I would have two on if I, if I could get through the shed door, but I just can't. So one's going to have to do for now. Um, but yeah. I think the clutch has also freed off a bit, um, I say freed off, and I had a problem with it slipping over 6,000. Now obviously this bike has just been sitting for 31 years with a sump full of old oil, and to be honest there would have been glazing on the pads, and I've gone out and given it quite a good ride, like here and there, and you know, working up and down the gears, and it seems to be alright now, so that's, that's okay. Um, it was just a bit of a pain because you'd go to accelerate and then the engine would pick up revs and the bike just wouldn't do it, you could feel it slipping. As soon as you drop below 6 again it would pick back up, it's just because obviously the clutch having the varnish on wasn't it like the power I was putting through at 6,000 RPM because that's, that's, that's where the power kicks in to be honest. But the torque, the torque is something else. Like I say, from around about 2,500 RPM you can ride this bike and let's say what am I doing now? I'm doing four and a half now, and if I want to open her up, she obliges. And then change the gear. But, like, it's. You've got the torque load down, and then if you want the power, you get it up to 6,000 RPM, and you've got the power. It's just. Oh, this engine is just beautiful. And to say it was invented back in 1978, maybe actually before that, as there was a prototype of this engine, but it um, was slightly different. But the Honda engineers had it spot on. Not many, like I say, not many people, well, I say not many people like the bike, but the bike was just a workhorse. That's, that's what it was designed for. It was a commuter. It was basically for delivery people. And it ran. There's, there's, there's records of these bikes getting 200, 250,000 miles on the clock. And if you keep them in turn, the engine's bulletproof. Um, it's a push run engine. It does have a centre cam, like, like a traditional V8 would. And basically that's driven off the crank. And that's what basically pushes the push rods. But it's such a simple engine. And like I say, and other than the cam, the cam belts had a few problems, but they actually, this got brought in to sort the problem out. Even though this bike going off the engine number was actually pre-cam chain trouble. Um, models, so I don't know why they took it in, but uh, well, had a brand new cam belt, uh, the cam chain put in not so long back. So yeah, it's <laughs> I'm just over the moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually not that far away from my super secret test track, which is just over there. Um, just ignore all the villages I'm going through. <laughs> Most people know where it is anyway. <laughs> There's four big turbines where it is, so you can't really miss the thing. But I just I just find it's a great little stretch of road because hardly anybody uses it so it's nice because when people drive through your videos one it distracts me and loses me train of thought and two they just sit there and go what the hell is he doing you're not going that way you're going straight on 
and there they are. Now the wind shouldn't be too bad up here because the wind can can be a bit of a problem with the camera I've got. So we'll see, we'll see. It doesn't look too bad, and the turbines aren't spinning too fast. So yeah, like I say, it was a bit of a bugger. I couldn't get my finale video done before my computer decided it was going to delete all my footage. But uh, well, I needed to get a video up because it's been quite a while since I've done one, as in a few weeks. So th th this is going to be my test ride, and then I'll do the the basically the unveil of the bike and go through all. Oh, oh, th there's a bit there. I got distracted. I got distracted. There was a hole there. So I'll go up here, go around the bike, and show you all the bits, and then go back home and show you a few more tricks of the trade. Up oh, this hill. This is a good bit of hill to go up. Woo! And it's got such a lovely engine note as well. I am running open velocity stacks at the moment. I am going to get some sock filters for them. But um, the 30 quid for the pair, so they're going to have to wait until I get a bit more money. Because money's a bit tight at the moment because I'm sorting out everything. I'm well, not sorting out everything, but I've got car insurance, car MOTs, I've got bike MOTs coming up, I've got the honeymoon to pay for. Uh, so much money's just flying out my wallet like nobody's business, but ah well. It's the way of the world, isn't it? Anyway, so come down here. There's me turbines. I don't know why. I know people say they're big ugly things, and don't get me wrong, how many there is around here, it's a bit... You know, there's far too many turbines around anyway. Yeah, the National Grid actually pays the companies who run these to switch them off. So, put a few here and there. I like having a few turbines. But anyway, I'm getting... Oh, there's cows. Oh, no. I'm going to get, I'm get, I've got a full audience here of cows. They're sitting there going, what the hell's that thing? But anyway, we'll drop down the box, and here's my little stage. So with that, I shall turn this video off. Oh, you're running a bit low on the RPM there. There we go. Needs adjusting. And I do my showcase of the bike. Oh, when I find neutral. There we go. So anyway, with that, um, I shall see you soon. And um, as always, keep safe.